I'm Tom Zwald. Um, we farm over here in western Wisconsin. We milk about 800 cows over here. We farm about 2,000 acres. Um, most of that goes to feed for the cattle. I'm sure the family dynamic goes smooth every day too, huh? It, farming with family is both challenging and rewarding at the same time. <laughs> That's a great politically correct answer here for, uh, for the talk um, on the podcast. So now with a lot more urbanization and whatnot, and, and obviously a lot more just public pressure overall to do things better, and especially animal agriculture and dairy has had some of the worst of it, in my opinion, worst of the flack. Um, how has that played, a, played part of your decision making and really influenced, you know, you guys' push to implement more sustainability? Yeah, so a couple of years ago, um, we joined up with a couple other area farmers and we started a farmer-led watershed initiative. We were trying to get on the forefront of that. Yep. We wanted to showcase what we're doing to go above and beyond the normal everyday routine. What, what are we doing that's beneficial? You know, um, one thing that we do a lot is we reuse a lot of things. Um, whether it be our manure is our, is a circle, you know, it goes back on the fields, it's our nutrients, our nutrients grow our crops, our crops come back to the farm, comes back and feeds the cows. Our water, for example, we, you reuse that four times. Um, we use it to cool our milk. We then turn around and water the cows with it. The cows excrete it as urine. We use urine to wash their bedding. Instead of fresh water, we're able to use that to wash the bedding, the sand that they lay on, and then we're able to utilize it as the carrier for the manure for the to go manure. out to sure. the field. So the cows are obviously doing their thing wherever they want they to. Are. Then you're scraping it all out. Yep. How often do you, how often do you have to scrape? So the, the manure is scraped into the sand lanes every time the cows go up to be milked. And every they time they go to be milked. Three milk. times a day. So three times a day, they're getting a clean, yep. clean stall, moving that all out, yes. and then it's kind of sitting, and then yeah, the sand just deposits to the ground. So you're able to pump the rest of it off and then let the sand dry and reuse. Right, there's a sand flume that actually, there's a flume that runs through the barn. Runs, a flume yeah. sounds like a made up Wisconsin word to no. me if I've ever There's heard one. There's a waterway that <laughs> runs through the barn. It's very fast water that runs through the barn. So all the sand gets taken out and then in the sand lanes it levels off so it slows down a lot and then that's when then the sand filters out. Then it's able to settle out. out. Okay, and I'm, then you take the sand off to the sides, let it drain and then you go put it in a pot. I still think that's a made up Wisconsin word. No, it's not. You can go see it. It's very wonderful. <laughs> so with with the watershed set up, are you guys able to, it's just advocating together, it's telling a story, it's, it's sharing that message, or it's getting some projects going, like cost share projects, or what so have you guys done? So we do have some cost share projects for the watershed here. Um, we also, it really started about sharing ideas. What has worked for guys in our area? What hasn't worked, you know? Um, what crops work as a cover crop? You know, one of our neighbors has flown on some cover crop seeds, some clover and some, um, I guess I don't know this full mix, yeah. but, but you know, but, did it work for us? Sure. And it's finding out what has worked in our area and what has not. And so it started off as that and it's evolved. Um, one thing we're trying to do in the group is establish baselines. So we're actually testing all of our members wells to establish not only surface water, surface water has gotten a lot of flack over the years, but we're trying to take it to the next level and establish what practices uh -huh. affect our groundwater positively. That's really cool. So like, um, how big is this area? Is it only dairy farmers? Or what's, how's that layout working? No, um, so it ends up being, I think we've got farmers from three different watersheds that are members. Okay. Um, again, some of the grants get a little, in, some of the grants are specific to one watershed or the other, um, or the cost sharing. And then we're, it's a combination. We've got large farms, small farms, cash grain, dairy operations. It's a, 
combination of all of the above. How's that? So how did you guys set that up? And like now, how is it administered? So like, is it through the Soil and Water Conservation District, through the government, or like it's all private? No, nope. we set up our own entity. Um, it was one thing when we were talking with the farmers and working on setting it up, was one thing everyone was a little concerned of is we wanted to do what works for us, not what we're told to do. Yeah. So it is completely private. We do get some government funds for various cost sharing, but it's not uh, through the NRCS or through the local offices at all. So how'd you guys like set that up? Cause I mean, that, that's something that definitely, I think would pique a lot of people's interest on, hey, how do we join together and yeah, maybe get a little bit of help to gather some data or to implement some new practices? Like how, how'd you set it up? So, well, we, to be honest, we set it up at the bar one night and decided what we were <laughs> Imagine gonna do. Imagine that, that's what always happens. All, all the best ideas. <laughs> but no, so we set it up and then we talked to a couple of the other watersheds in the state that have been going longer than us and just figured out what we need and what we need to do to go forward. Yeah. So um, we applied and we got our um, charity status so that we could get the appropriate funds coming in. Um, and then from there, it was just a matter of getting all the documents drafted. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's run as a nonprofit. And so that's how you're able to tap into some of these other resources and, and help to like get the grants and stuff. And, Correct. Um, what's been some of the best resources, I guess, there to kind of go to at the state level or at the university or other groups or? Yeah, so um, we've had input. We've had a couple of field days. They've been a great success, actually, as outreach and, you know, them. When we have a field day, we're putting together the experts in the area. Yep. So we've had the NRCS come and have a station at that field day. We've had. Um, our latest one was we have a farmer in our group that farms exclusively no-till, dairy farmer, so he manages his manure in a, I shouldn't call it no-till, minimum till, yeah. trying to low disturbance manure injection and how it's worked. And so we had his fields, we got to see it, we got to, he had dug us a couple of pits. You know, one of the stations was NRCS, one of the stations was the manure applicator. One of the stations was talking about our group and what if anybody wanted to join. Yeah. And just getting it out. And even if they don't join, if they can see what's worked, that means a lot to a lot totally. of people. So what's the future of the watershed looking like and of you guys' efforts? Um, so yeah, we've worked with the University of River Falls. We've partnered up with down here to help us do some of the sampling and yep. testing that we need. And it's evolving, um, which it should, you yep. know. Being stagnant is not normally the best thing. Yeah. So we're tr evolving and we're figuring out next steps. Um, they did some further testing to test ground infiltration levels of rainfall events this mm. last year. So we haven't seen that data yet, but I'll be very curious when they get compiled this semester. And yeah can get some of that out to us. So so then with that data, you'd be looking at, okay, now how do we deploy the next project? How do we sign up more people? How do we get more partners involved? Or like, what, what what's 2020 look like, I suppose? To yeah, for so part of that data was we looked at a few different fields. We looked at some no-till fields, some conventional fields, yep. and just trying to establish what are our water infiltration rates? Because infiltration is, going to affect your groundwater. Yeah. So setting that up and now you can monitor over time. Now, how are we impacting this? And then we can start to establish the best management practices, not only for our surface water, but, but also our ground. groundwater. That's really cool. Um, what do you see as opportunity, I guess, for the dairy industry, for your farm? Like what, what's kind of the, the next steps from here vision that you have? Um, so what do I see, you know, I see us showcasing a lot, you know, as we get a fewer percentage of the U.S. population is from a farm or even one degree from a farm, it's going to be more important to share our story, share what we're doing so people know what we're doing, what we've changed and why we do it. You know, it's not too often we just on a whim go, 
you know, hey, it feels like a good thing. I should get the moldboard plow back out of the shed. Yeah. You know, there might be an instance where you need to, but it's why did you need to? People don't realize there might be the need for anything. You know, why did you go to no-till? Why did you go to cover crops? And it's uh, sharing your story, I think, is gonna be a big thing in the next. If you walked on the farm and I never heard of cover crops and you go, cover crops are sustainable. Yeah. If you don't have any data, it's gonna be a hard pitch for you to tell me, by the way, you're gonna be more, more profitable <laughs> if you spend more money to put more seed in the ground. Yeah, exactly. You know, you gotta see some hard data. There's not too many guys who will off a whim. I know there's guys out money. there <laughs> that will just, hey, that, let's try it, why not? Yeah, yeah, but it's hard to be able to do that, especially in the farm economy, that, the way that is, like it's hard to take that risk and screw something up and waste even more money or, or negatively impact your next year's crop. Like you can have a disaster, but that's why, yeah, I think that data can really help us to overcome a lot of that risk and utilizing a group of people to gather data together is great. Cause then it's not all has to come out of your pocket. Everybody can kind of share in the effort. And that's where, you know, some of these groups have really came about is, hey, try it on 20 acres. Yeah. See what you think. By the way, we can cost share some, you know, whether it's a watershed group or I know the NRCS has had some initiatives over the years. Try it on 20 acres and they're almost paying you for it. Yeah. Well, you don't go wrong to try it one year if you can get some funding for it. Yeah.